Hey everybody, let's talk about Blue Beetle Book 2, Jaime Reyes. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Frank Casina, and today we want to review Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, Book 2, or as I incorrectly pronounced it, Blue Beetle Book 2, Jaime Reyes. They're both Jaime Reyes. But anyway, Jaime Reyes is the name of the character. This guy right here, Blue Beetle, and they're saying it's Blue Beetle because it's not Ted Kord or Dan Garrett. This is the new Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes. Not new. He's been around for uh, almost 10 years, over 10 years. Since 2007, Infinite Crisis number 5 was his first appearance as we went over, I think, in the last video. But, um, that I did of this these books. So these are both out in the universe. You can go and check these out. They're they're pretty recent. They're in print. You should go buy them. They're awesome. Um, book two was even more fun than book one. That is hard to say sometimes with these older books. Um, this is like a, a matte paper or whatever. I've done overviews of these on the channel. So if you want to look at the art, go check that out. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of hold it up here. If you hear any whining or whatever, I got a new puppy, so she's in the background. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so this is kind of continuing the story of the last book, even though it's not really like what's so weird about this Blue Beetle series is that it's not really a one long contiguous story, even though by the end of this book, you're kind of like, oh, it kind of was a long contiguous story. Um, there's not defined arcs. Every, most of the issues are one and done's. You know, um, until you get to the last couple of issues and then they actually say this is part one of four and that's the end game book, which immediately follows this uh, fun little Spectre interlude. Um, so that's kind of where Jaime is come, going against the reach and you don't even realize it when you're reading this first issue because he's on an adventure with Danny Garrett, Dan Garrett's uh, granddaughter, and they're meeting this guy uh, in the red. His name is like Voltar or something like that. Tovar. There you go. You've never met him before, and you never will meet him again. He's a Reach creation. And uh, you don't really realize that they're starting the crossover until the very end of that book where he's like, hey, Reach, I'm coming to get you. And you flip the page, and it says part two. Um, so I remember reading him at the time because I was buying these single issues once upon a time and just being like, oh, it's another issue in Blue Beetle. Awesome, awesome. And then like, oh, man, we're really going somewhere at the end of that issue because he's like, let the Reach know I'm coming for him. Because uh, he's had enough. So at the end of the last volume, the Reach showed up to Earth and they said, Hey, we're the ones who created the Scarab and, um, you know, we're, we're here to help. And you kind of start off the first couple of issues here exploring that and you quickly find out that they're not here to um, help the Earth. They're here to control it and take it over. So we're kind of moving towards this confrontation little by little and the Reach is trying to figure out why Jaime Reyes is the way he is, why his Scarab is different why he's able to control it, and you're kind of having these little one-off adventures as we move further and further along. Um, Tracy 13 is introduced as like the girl Jaime is interested in, not Brenda, uh, you know, and one of the fun parts in here is they go up against Eclipso, and you find out like his greatest fear is, um, or his greatest wish is becoming this dentist <laughs> instead of a superhero. He's like, the one superhero that doesn't want to be a superhero, but he is because this thing is bonded to his spine. Um, it's just a whole lot of fun. There's a Sinestro Corps tie-in in here that was awesome. Uh, and you find out like what happens if the Sinestro Corps ring comes up uh, with the Blue Beetle. Because <clears throat> there's one here that... There's like a Scarab and a Sinestro Corps ring that bonds on the Peacemaker. Yes, Peacemaker's still in this book. And um, they kind of go against each other and do battle. And at the end of that, Peacemaker is finally like um, taking that piece of the scarab out of himself and giving it to Jaime. All the knowledge and stuff that he had bonded on him and that we found out about in the first book. Like the knowledge is finally reincorporated into the scarab by the end of this. And we finally learn the scarab's name. And of course, it's a great callback to Dan Garrett, Kajida, which is the magic words he said to activate the scarab. And they kind of link it all together really neatly to say like, hey, uh, these we thought these were magic words. It's not magic. It's alien technology. Uh, you think it's a code name or a thing like Komoda or Shazam or whatever, and it's not. It's actually the name of the thing you're holding that you think is a magical artifact. Uh, and it just like at the end, the very last issues when all this comes together, the last issue of this book, 
which is number 25 this clutch 13 through 25 and it's just like it wraps up in such a nice way that you're just like oh so good so good so much fun um john rogers is the writer for most of these there's a couple fill-ins here and the main artist is Raphael albuquerque who went on to do american vampire uh and he's done some stuff on batman recently and a couple of other things Got a couple other fill-in artists in here, David Baldion doing some artwork, uh, but for the most part, it's Raphael Albuquerque just killing it. I fell in love with him uh, on this Blue Beetle run, seriously. Uh, I took notice of him. I was like, this guy's awesome. He's got a cool style. Um, you know, it just fits. It's, it's evocative. It's expressive. It's fun. It's energetic. It's just really, really awesome here. Uh, so some phenomenal artwork in here from from. A different style of comic book art than we normally see on like you know a Batman or Superman book it's more evocative and expressive and if anything it's kind of like leading into the Renaissance that comic books had uh, a little bit later in terms of art styles anyway like I'm thinking you know you had the Ba brothers come in Gabriel Ba Fabio Moon come in uh, a couple years later with Umbrella Academy um, you have Javier Pulido and Giuseppe Camicoli kind of coming in with their art styles <clears throat> These more cartoonish, expressive, less detail and more evocative art styles. So Raphael is kind of on this wave, uh, beginning wave here back in, what, 2008, 2010? And just killing it. So props to him for, you know, starting off on Blue Beetle. And I would love to see him return to the character, honestly. Um, but I don't, I don't know that Blue Beetle has this, like, big following or anything kind of way. Um, what's more fun about here to draw a contrast to current art in Raphael Albuquerque is the most recent uh, miniseries Blue Beetle Graduation Day, I think which comes out in trade this August, just in time for the film. Um, that art style is a little bit more manga inspired, but it's got that same energy, that same evocativeness uh, that uh, Raphael has here on the original run. So it's just a whole lot of fun. Honestly, I love these books so much. I'm so glad that they're both in trade paperback that you can go pick them up. They are in print now. Go pick them up. I hope there's a book three. Um, I haven't seen it solicited or anything yet. I know when book one came out, I don't know if that was it last summer or in the fall. Uh, this one, I believe, came out in March. Um, I was looking like volume two was on Amazon or something. Like There was a hint, an indication fairly quickly that volume two was coming to close out the John Rogers run. However, I don't know if there's going to be a book three to close out this series, this original run of Jaime Reyes' adventures as Bull Beetle. That being said, you can find the original trades. They are out there. Um, I have them, and I'm going to read and review them here on the show coming up in the next couple of episodes. So more Blue Beetle to come. Hell, let's fucking make it a Blue Beetle summer all the way till August and read the entire Blue Beetle collection in trade. Uh, I've got every single one that there's been. So after this, we're going to finish out. There's two more that do the pre-52 Blue Beetle run. And then there's two new 52 trades and then two rebirth or three. Yeah, three rebirth trades. So we're going to read them all and review them all, hopefully before the film comes out in August. So this is the summer of Blue Beetle here on BK's Bullets. Jaime Reyes, one of the most bestest, awesomest, most impactful characters, new characters you've ever seen since 2007. Yes, I'm talking also about Miles Morales, but that is a different video. So, we will catch you next time here on BK's Bullets. Let me know in the comments down below. If you love Jaime Reyes as much as I do, he's my one of my favorite characters for a long, long time. Uh, we'll see you guys next time in The Funny Pages.